family guide for you guys on YouTube. Okay, so we're gonna go through the steps how to make your own zero writer using the uh, parts from GitHub. Step one is to get your hinge mechanism going and the kind of main body of the zero writer assembled. Okay, so to get started, the hardest part of the build is getting the hinges to work right. Um, so basically what you want to do is take your Game Boy hinges, you want to slather them up with epoxy or Gorilla Glue or um, whatever you have on hand. I think epoxy is a bit better, it's a bit stronger. Um, and then uh, basically you just want to kind of line them up with the hole and jam them in there. You can use something to apply a bit of pressure to get it to go in a bit more firmly but basically you just want to make sure that the um, hinge mechanism is kind of sticking out so it's able to turn and then on the other side of the mechanism you want to again use your uh, epoxy or glue um, that way when you push the two parts together like pictured here uh, it adheres together properly and that's really the hardest part you just gotta wait for it to set after you uh, put the parts together okay and then after you've waited a while for the adhesive to stick and uh, everything to be good you can test it out. You should see your hinge kind of moving independently. Okay, next up we're gonna start doing some of the internals for the Zero Rider here. So easiest to start with is the keyboard. Um, the trick here is to make sure you have your USB connector going the right direction. Um, because you need it to kind of slot in along the top of the case there, as you can see. Just kind of line it up, make sure you feed the USB cord through, and then you feed the cable up into the housing for the parts above. And as you can see, I uh, made a little hole there with some pliers because I forgot to add it to the STL files. Whoops. This just gives a little bit extra room for the cable to be fed through. Uh, the important part to that is uh, if you don't have any extra room there, it just makes it a little bit harder to get the display on and having it sit flush. Okay, so once you've fed the cable through, you're going to want to use the hinge cover here. It just kind of slides on top. This just covers the cable and kind of keeps it in place. It makes it all look nice. Uh, so you just kind of screw it in once it's lined up. Um, test it out. Should be fine. Looks nice and clean. Next up, we're going to be looking at seating the Raspberry Pi. Note that the right angle headers, they're really important. Uh, the reason you want to go with right angle headers in this project is uh, because we're really limited on vertical space uh, because the, the design is so um, tight. So uh, if you go with the right uh, angle headers here, you can see there's enough room on the left side where we can actually connect all of our cables without uh, running out of room.
as you can see here, uh, we have enough room to work with now. The kind of structure is there. So next up, we're going to be kind of connecting uh, the different pieces and assembling the guts of the project. So you're going to want a uh, USB connector. Um, so you want the micro USB that goes into Raspberry Pi uh, to connect to your keyboard. Get that ready. And then we're going to do the screen. So here you can see the screen assembly. Um, kind of just, whoops. <laughs> kind of just goes together. Um, so the screen slots into the back. Line it up. Looking good. And then all you're going to want to do is kind of screw it in place so it uh, doesn't fall apart on you. I'm speeding that up. And when you're done, looks nice and clean. And you're ready to move on to the next step, which is kind of connecting it to the to the Pi. As you can see, it kind of slots right in there when it's all ready. And this is a wired Pi. You can check out my other videos if uh, you want some instruction there, but basically you just follow the WaveShare um, guide for connecting it. There's instructions on GitHub how to do it too. And then uh, connect to the back of the display. And you are wired up and your display is good to go. Your cables will develop a nice bend there. It's the sign that you're doing it right. Okay, so next up, this part's easy. We're just gonna connect our power supply. So I just went with a, a USB a battery pack from Amazon. I don't remember, it was cheap. Uh, make sure you have the right connector for your Raspberry Pi. And uh, yeah, you just feed it up the back. There's a little uh, opening in the back you can use. Feed it up and in. Make sure you give yourself uh, plenty of slack to work with. You want to make sure the uh, cable is pushed up so you can kind of set the Pi Zero on top of it, which kind of keeps everything in place in kind of a makeshift way. If you want to, you could do like brackets or, or something more permanent, but I find this just does the trick. I'm not trying to impress anyone, right? And as you can see, we have just enough room on the left with that uh, right angle header pin. Now we're going to do the last part, which is just kind of taping it up. Make sure everything kind of stays in place. You can use electrical tape for this. You can consider putting on a heat sink on your Raspberry Pi too if you're worried about heat in there. Um, that's up to you. If you're looking to overclock, it's probably a good idea. Uh, hooked up the battery there. You can see the Pi is blinking to life. The screen's probably going to turn on in a second. Yeah. That hooks up the keyboard there. And then we have these kind of cables sticking out, so you want to tape those down too, just to keep them out of the way. And I'm just going to kind of fix the cable there so it goes through the hole properly, just giving us a little bit more vertical clearance. When you're doing the final assembly, one thing to keep in mind, probably sound. 
you might want to consider pre-threading these holes or screwing them in before you do this just to make sure it depends on your print if your print quality isn't very good uh, that's it uh, after you screwed it in you've got a completed build uh, you can open and close your unit the hinges are working everything is looking good and uh, I just turned the power on here so it should flash the screen as it automatically boots up there it is my file is loaded and I can continue typing So yeah, hopefully this guide kind of helped clarify how you could put your own together. All the files and instructions needed are on GitHub. Um, if you're interested in the project, check it out. Consider joining our Discord channel. There's a bunch of people working on there who are building their own. You can ask questions, generally help each other out. Uh, this video is meant as kind of a rough guide. I'd really encourage you to kind of make it your own, change it up, do your own thing. Uh, mix up the files, have fun with it. So if you watched all that and you're like, that's way too much work, then I've got good news for you because I am launching something in the next couple months uh, on crowdfunding. I've got a great manufacturing partner lined up. Uh, the machine kind of does everything I want, like instant on, uh, crazy battery life, uh, all kinds of good stuff that I'm not able to do on the Raspberry Pi. So excited to share that. If you're interested, uh, please, you know, the usual stuff. Join uh, Discord, Reddit, follow on YouTube, whatever whatever works for you. And uh, yeah, let me know in the comments uh, what you would like out of your like perfect device.